YouTube, welcome to the top 16. Are you ready? We're gonna start this off with a tier lament Monadium deck versus what is many to be believed to be the best deck in the game, U Bell versus tier lament Monadium. Let's go. By watching as long as you can, that greatly supports these videos. I appreciate that greatly. Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Begin. Huh? This is not top tier you bell, huh? Okay, set a finger and in perm pass. We're gonna start off with pressure planet grabbing from the deck, our Fenrir. Grabbing our Scarecrow, Geo saying the music is not loud enough, so we change that up, thank you. We're gonna activate the tier limit field spell, searching for the Vsauce Starfrost, so it's actually not a tier limit deck. We got jabated, I got jabated, that is. We're gonna special summon the ball, pop the ball to summon our Vsauce Starfrost. We're gonna summon a ball from the deck after being popped. As we further Shokan this up into a Baron de Floor. Can't Nibiru unless we Nibiru chain Imperm onto the Baron de Floor, which we could very well do. We have the Call of the Grave onto that Vsauce Starfrost as the Baron de Floor attempts to wipe it out, successfully doing so, that is. We are gonna keep on going, pop the ball, activate again, summon from the deck, it's not a hard once per turn, make it a level four, as we now make a Vsauce and Retira. Vsauce and Retira searching our deck for the Peaceful Planet, searching for a Monadium card. We're going to destroy Fenrir to boost up our field to then banish the Fenrir to summon our Scareclaw Kashtira. Now we're going to Nibiru, now we're going to negate Nibiru, and then we're going to negate the negate of the Nibiru mate. Nibiru tripping off the entire field, Maxi is now a Pot of Greed. It's gonna summon a Nibiru, then summon a token, draw one, draw two, wipe it up, let's go. So very well done, despite us bricking on our very first turn. If your opponent bricks turn one, you better be expecting some big hand traps. Searching for a Vsauce, which is currently negated by the finger. We're gonna use the Obsidian, pop in the token, follow up with the Imagining to reveal the Star Frost to draw to return a card back in the deck. We do not need that cross out designator. We do have triple tactics talent to look at that hand. Ooh, that hand sucks. Return that Squirmer back as we are now gonna follow up Obsidian, special summon the Vsauce Star Frost. Even though it's negated, we do not care. Shokan into the Lightheart. All these plays after Nibiru, by the way. Searching for the Scareclaw Field Spell. Scareclaw Field Spell, I'm gonna be searching for the Rankheart. Rankheart's gonna be searching for an Arrival. Arrival's gonna reborn from the Graveyard. Come forth, holy moly, so many plays we're making. Level 10 Synchro into Chaos Angel. Now, what protections is the Chaos Angel giving you? Both. Synchros are unaffected by monster effects and none of your monsters can be destroyed by battle. Banish in the Graveyard, come forth, Vicious Astro Loud. You have 7,800 damage on the field. Now 93, <laughs> Le lethal through a Nibiru. Holy moly, this deck is nuts. Imperm and Nibiru. Wow, that that was good, that was great. You want money? That's not even on the table. They will not give money no matter what. Now, what are our disruptions here? We have a ton. We have pop a card, link with a special summon, banish with Lil Knight, banish with Lil Knight, and then we have four disruptions on top of our four with the Apollo, so that's eight. And then we have the Phantom of Bell, which is nine. We have nine disruptions here, plus a maxi. Let's go. Oh, the D Lotus is 10. D Lotus could also, so it's very, very important D Lotus. Do not use D Lotus before the Phantom of Bell, or otherwise their monster effect will change into destroying the Phantom of Bell. Get the Phantom of Bell first, then D Lotus change the monster effect into destroy the U Bell on the field. Very good. Let's go. Maxi is negated, so we don't have Maxi. Yeah, we fingered ourselves. So with 10 disruptions, what do we do? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to escape the unchain. Pop in the field spell on activation. So now down to only nine disruptions, only nine. Trigger the Yama, reborn the Soul of Rage back onto the field here. Also adding a Spirit of Yubel. So if you were to declare an attack, we could special summon that Spirit of Yubel. You do have to attack if you have a monster in attack position, that is. We're back. Reichardt, 
Well, I have nine disruptions, so why not? Negate. Now, the Phantom of Bell is fingerable, where the Apollyose is not. Come forth and summon your bell from the deck. As we said, you want to Phantom of Bell, then you can D-Lotus. Lightheart, are we gonna use D-Lotus? D-Lotus? No, we actually let a card effect go through with eight disruptions left. What the heck? Vsauce Starfrost going to be negated by the D-Lotus. Turn the effect into Destroy My Yubel. Boom, we're now down to just seven disruptions left. Trigger the field spell, trigger Yubel. <laughs> you don't want to play through seven more disruptions. Come on, man. Come on. Let's hop into game three. Let's we'll start off with a Fen Rear. We got nothing here, so let's speed this up. We have negates, we have pop a monster, we have negate, negate, negates, we have reframing, negate anything, and a call of the grave. We'll count call of the grave as a disruption. We have seven forms of disruption. If we reborn a monster from the grave, that's not going to turn into a disruption with the sprite elf. And let's go. Seven. Can you beat seven? Not as good as you, Bell. We're not going to negate the Dark Beckoning as we have now the Spirit Gate searching for another Dark Beckoning Beast. Additional summon the D-Lotus. We're going to Elf Reborn Mascarina, which actually was another form of disruption because it could turn into a Lil Knight. So we actually had nine disruptions. We're going to Finger the Mascarina, Baron to Floor, negate the Finger. So we're now down to eight disruptions. Very well done. Mascarina hiding in that graveyard. Link this up into a Lil Knight. Lil Knight on summon is going to banish a card, so we're now down to seven disruption on summon. Get rid of that D Lotus. No way to reborn it back. Further linking this up into an Al Mirage. Get F'd you, Bell. Well, uh, they are getting F'd, yes. We're now going to summon a Phantom of you, Bell, which could get fingered. Spirit Gates, discard Spirit to reborn nothing as we banish and negate. We're not gaining access to the very much needed Nightmare Pain. Now it's six disruptions left. What can we do? Spirit Gates is not target, so we could reborn something else at least. Further show conning into our own Little Knight. Little Knight on summon, targeting the reframing. Reframing is going to negate and destroy because it's a counter trap. We can't chain Little Knight to it activating. Spell speed two versus spell speed three. Three wins. We have five disruptions left. Okay, add back the Trisukta and the balls. Back in the deck we go. Ending our turn. We still had so much more disruption. Damn. We have Rykard searching for the arrival here. Arrival arrive onto the field, Vsauce Starfrost. Or the show conning into our Chaos Angel. On summon, banish a card on the field. Get rid of the Phantom of Ubel. Now, you could not like this ruling, but it is the ruling. Synchro monsters are unaffected by monster effects. Even though it's unaffected, it's still affected because we're changing the effects, not affecting the card. Okay. We're going to Dispater negate the Phantom of Ubel. I do not think so, mate. And with that, we have 11,000 damage on the field without even putting the Dispater into attack position, which we have now done. Over 14,000 damage in the field, lethal damage, and just like that, Monadium defeating Yubel. I think it really all came down to that game one, playing through a Nibiru, which was absolutely insane. Game one, April versus Magus, begin. We're gonna set up an Emblema Oath, putting a Primera into the back row. Wherever the Primera is, it's locking you into Centurion only from the action deck. We're going to Ash negate the Primera, searching for the field spell, but we already have the field spell, so you got debated. We didn't even want to finger your Ash. Field spell, discard the Call of the Grave, so Magus gets to see that. Trudea, special summon for the back row, make it level eight. Equip into the back row an Emeth. Emeth, special summon for the back row, making the Auxilla. Auxilla on summon, search our deck for the Phalanx, and just like that, it's the basic, absolute basic Centurion turn one that gives you two disruptions. 
You could banish a monster, you could then summon an Omni Negate. On top of that, we have Max C and the Ogre, so about triple disruption plus the Max C. Let's go. A hero lives as we are going to chain our Primera to it, then chain the Max C to our Primera. We wanted to fill out their disruption. They have Ash Blossom to negate our Max C. So with the Primera and the Trudea, we're going to get both of them out to make a Crimson Dragon. And I'm, ex I'm excited to see what kind of disruption we set up here. We have Stratos on summon, activating to search the deck. We're not using Trudea yet. We're waiting to make that level 12 Synchro. When do we fire off our level 12 Synchro play? Right now, on the resolution, come forth, trigger the field spell. Emeth's going to push the Trudea back into the back row as we now make the Crimson Dragon. Now, with the Harpy Feather Duster, is it good? Well, the Auxilla states, face up cards in your back row cannot be destroyed, so the face down would still be destroyed here. Shokan into this god animation for some reason. Crimson Dragon is going to target the Auxilla. Blazard does not have an animation. That will negate a summon, an activation of a spell trap or monster effect, negate anything. We're going to Phalanx banish the Stratos. Stratos will dodge the banishment to chain our mass change instead. Come forth and summon Masked Hero Blast. Back row protected. Now the Blast has the effect on summon to reduce a monster by half its current attack. You could also target a back row card to return it back to the hand. Even though the back row cannot be destroyed, we could still spin it back. We have Viant being negated on the activation of its effect to send from the deck to the grave. We're gonna follow up Miracle Fusion. We just have Ghost Ogre left for our other form of disruption. We are going to, within the battle phase, activate the Sunshine to destroy the Auxilla. We're going to use Ogre to destroy the Sunshine. Thus, we still have Blast to attack directly as the Auxilla still gets wiped out. Now, at this current field, this is not good whatsoever. By the way, how the Blazar Dragon works, a lot of people keep making this mistake against me. If this comes out in the end phase and then you start activating effects, it will banish, negate, come back, and then it can do it again. So if you activate 10 effects in the end phase, it will negate 10 times and keep on coming back within that same end phase. Trudea special summon for the back row, and we're not going to be doing anything off of that. Wiping out the blast, 1,000 to the face. Couldn't we have blasted the Trudea, but then the Blazer would have negated, so we didn't want to do that. Phalanx within the battle phase, reborning Auxilla for 1,500 attack, four game, it's half of its attack, searching for a stand-up Centurion, lethal damage. Heroes versus Centurion, begin. We do have Maxi and Impermanence. We have no way to stop the Maxi nor Impermanence. We have the Impermanence being used onto the Vine, stopping it from searching for a Palmerization and also sending a card from the deck to the grave. We do not want to allow that. We're going to follow up Palmerization with the Shadow Mist that will trigger the effect to search our deck for any hero monster. Under the effect of Maxi, though, how much special summoning do we want to perform? Come forth, Infernal Rage. We're going to be triggering the Infernal Rage and the Shadow Mist. The Infernal Rage will be chain link blocked, thus the Ash Blossom will not be activatable here. Searching for a Stratos when we already used up our normal summon, so I'm thinking that we're going to end our turn by just setting up the Favor Contact. We are going to special summon again. Okay, summon a Sunrise. Sunrise searching for a Miracle Fusion. Still not using Ash Blossom, thus now ending our turn. Now, at the Favor Contact, we could summon from our extra deck a Mad Lad, which will be the Shining Neos Wingman. This on Special Summon will destroy cards your opponent controls up to the number of different attributes, and it also does not target. So that's going to be at least pop two. We got Trudea here, put herself in the back row to equip the Primera. Primera on Summon, going to search for the Field Spell. Setting up, setting up that field spell to then discard a card to equip a Centurion card into our back row. Emeth will special summon from the back row as we're now going to use that favorite contact. And due to the Emeth being in Earth, this should be a pop three. We pop in three. Let's go. Turn player would trigger field spell. Non-turn player will be the higher chain link to wipe out the monsters before the field spell performs the synchro summon. So that's exactly what we're attempting to do as we can now wipe out three cards on the field. We can take out just all the monsters. Everything, all the monsters and the back row be gone. 
follow up Magna Hut, banishing the Shadow Mist. Magna Hut triggering to grab a Dragon during the end phase, as it now can make our Typhon. With our Typhon, we can activate to spin a monster back to the extra deck you go. Vayan gonna get Baboosted. Wait, we Baboosted up the uh, Neo Swingman instead. Wait, what the? It, it got Baboosted off, off the other thing. That wasn't the effect. We were actually boosting up the Vayan. Holy moly. Target one hero, target the Vayan, bigger than the Typhon, 3,500. This gets boosted up per card in the grave. That's why it got boosted. For each monster in the graveyard. Grabbing a Druid Swarm within the end phase. Come to us. We have Liquid Soldier and the Stratos. By and banishing for the graveyard, going to get negated by the Ash Blossom. Thus, we're not going to be searching for our Palmerization. Negate. Now, we're going to summon the Stratos. Stratos on summon. We're going to pop two back row cards. We're going to use Phalanx to banish the Neo Swing Man. Thus, the Vine will be the only other elemental hero to take out the field spell with. As we further show this up into an Anna freaking Conda, I rarely see this being used in heroes. Oh my gosh, what are we summoning off of this? Probably a DP to the E. First, we're going to use Miracle Fusion because the Anaconda stops you from special summoning for the rest of the turn. Let's go, let's go. You want before and after proof of Manscape? Done. Anaconda, minus 2k, send the Fusion Duplicate, Fusion Destiny, that is. DP to the E. Non-target poppage is here. We want to pop that back row card. Take it out. There you go. Just like that. Activate Reborn during the next turn. What do we do? April. Non-target poppage every turn. Top decking an effect veiler. Sure. Drew Swarm on the attack. Taking out that Anaconda. We're going to end phase pop herself plus the DP, uh, DPE and the Drew Swarm. Drew Swarm having nothing to send to the graveyard. Thus, it has been nullified. Now, Liquid Soldier is here with a, a dead Fusion Destiny, right? This could be no good. Liquid Soldier on summon. Reborn the Stratos. Effect Veiler could get dodged by the DPE. We could pop ourselves. I mean, look how royal the deck is. What the heck? Your deck looks great. We're not going to DPE pop. We ain't, we're not dodging. No dodge on the Veiler. We're just going to go to battle just like this. We have Malicious for additional plays. Summon a Malicious from the deck. Denier return Malicious back. Then summon Malicious again back in the field after linking it off. Very likely would have turned this into over 8,000 damage within this turn. Lubellion. If I use Manscaped, will I stop bricking with you, Bell? You'll stop bricking with everything, mate. No Centurion plays. We, we got nothing. What the heck was that? Some Centurion players are playing Bonfire to search for a Trudea to help make the deck more consistent. We're going to Ferris discard a card, set up the Vision Hero Increase. We're going to banish the Malicious before it activates to summon one from the deck. We're going to Stratos on summon, activate to pop both back row cards here. Come forth, Vision Hero Increase. So it's two other heroes. Non-target, pop both of those back row cards. Be gone. Damn. We have Ash Blossom negating the Vision Hero Increase. We're going to finger their Ash, stopping them from negating us from summoning from the deck a Vian. And just like that, we do have another Drew Swarm. Is that going to be good enough to stop these plays, or can we still inflict lethal damage? Vian is here on summon, send from the deck Mist. Mist will trigger when sent, grabbing a Malicious. Vian's going to banish from the graveyard, grabbing a Palmerization. Palmerize activating a Fusion Shokan into. DPE. We're going to further link this up into a Cross Crusader. Cross Crusader, reborn a Destiny Hero. Drew Swarm, just like that, banish it. You will not be reborning. Now that that has been disrupted, what are our plays? Not enough for lethal damage. There is self-inflicting damage to trigger the increase to go back into the back row. Sure. And uh, we didn't DPE pop. We're just going to, you know, we didn't want to send one of our other cards. Sure. We could also top deck a Call by the Grave. They could also, they Magna Hutted, right? So Magna Hut could banish the DPE if we get it into the graveyard. So ideally, we keep the DPE on the field and just do not let it get to the grave to get banished. Are they out of this deals though? Like triple Lubellion? Really? Like, do, do you only play one Magna Hut, one Druid Swarm, and triple Lubellion? That is wild. Drusorm triggering to send the Ferris. We're going to increase, dodge the Drusorm send, a special summon from the back row. Trigger the increase, summon for the deck Vian. Vian on summon, trigger, send from the deck, increase. Lubellion setting up a regained as we now Shokan into Typhon. Now the Typhon doesn't stop the DPE from activating because it's not 3,000 attack or more. 
Activate to spin back, TPE, non-target pop itself into the graveyard, likely wiping out the regained. Yup, get that regained out of here. Spin back the increase, it is a non-target spin back. Trigger the effect, and because we don't play other bestials, we can't banish DPE? Three Lubellion and two bestials. I think that is what we're doing. Hmm. Buy and banish on the graveyard, grabbing a Palmerization. We have Increase and the Vion now making a Divisor, which will be searching for the elemental hero Neos. Reveal from the extra deck, Neos Wingman, come to me. Palmerize. We're going to chain DPE, pop in the Palmerization. Also taking out that Typhon. There you go. Palmerize is already going to be going to the graveyard, so you may as well non-target pop it. As we now make our elemental hero Sunrise, we have 5,800 damage on the field activating Sunrise to grab a Miracle Fusion, which could use the graveyard to get Fusion Summoning. Banishing the graveyard to come forth and make an Infernal Rage. With Infernal Rage, we now have 8,900 damage on the field, adding a favorite contact for the next turn, which will not be happening. It just like that, Grand Magus, the real Jaden is here. Lethal damage with elemental heroes. April, thank you for playing Centurion. I appreciate both of you. Let's keep on going. All right. We have, we can go into Little Knight Double Banish. We have Promethean Princess. We have the Amble Whale, which could pop a card in the field. We have Ash Blossom. So that's about five disruption plus Droll Knockbird. So that's six. Also, Max C. What else we have in the graveyard? We don't have the main Garunix. So about six disruptions in a playthrough. Bonfire, searching our deck for a Poplar to trigger without using up our normal summon. We're going to draw Lockbird, thus no more searching. So our own Max C is now turned off. Now, even though you can't search, you could still attempt to summon a monster from the deck or send from the deck, so the Ash could still be usable here. Making our Link Karibo, equipping the Poplar. Sure. Send Poplar for our Diablo Star. Diablo Star will set up the original Sinful. Yep, yep, yep. This is where we could Masquerina Lil Knight banish it. That's looking like what we're doing. We're going to summon Masquerina with the Flame Burge. We're going to Masquerina into Little Knights. It's important to use the Masquerina before Promethean Princess, which would lock you in a fire only. Little Knight. Banishing Link Karibo, not the original Sinful. Goodbye to the Little Knights. We're now down to triple disruption. Original Sinful with the Ash. I don't think so. Negate. And we saw Promethean plus Amblo Whale. Whale, whale, whale. We didn't even get through all the disruptions here. Linking this off into an Anima. D what? Mitchell! What? Did you really? You connection failed. Oh my gosh. Well, that, that does happen. You IRL, spill your juice all over the table. That is a game loss. All right, let's hop into game two. Wanted Seeker grabbing our Diablo Star within our draw phase here. We're going to send the Kirin to come forth and summon. We do have Ash Blossom, which it would be good to use on the original Sinful if we're not afraid of a Gamma. We're going to Ash it anyway. And then we could follow up with the Fire King Sanctuary if we didn't have the Call by the Great Finger. So with that, let's speed this up and count up the disruptions. We have the ability to Masquerina into Double Little Knight. We could Amble Whale pop a card while it's in the graveyard. We have Promethean pop a card. We have Kirin pop a card. We have Arvata negate a monster. And that is about six disruptions. Six. Let's go. Let's do it right here, right now. Flame Burst in response to the Hydrant summoning our Masquerina from the back row. Masquerina going to link off with the Flame Burst into our Little Knight to banish that Hydrant off of the field. Come forth, little knights. Banish. Trigger the flame burst, reborn two level one fires. Come to me, Ash and Poplar. Trigger both. We're going to search for two cards. Come to me, original and a Ponyx. 
Setting up at the Rescue Ace HQ for an additional summon. We're now going to Kirin, pop the Poplar, trigger Garunix, send Kirin, summon a monster, pop that thing, and we have an Arvats on the field, and you now also lose your Hydrants. It's too much. Let's go to game three. Begin. I don't know about you. I mean, we all hate Maxi. Maxi's really good. It's too good to not play, but I am so sick of my Maxi getting fingered. I'm sick of it getting ashed. I'm sick of it getting negated. I'm at the point where I almost don't want to play Maxi myself to instead play a hand trap. I know that they're not going to finger or ash like just a Nibiru. Would it be better if we just had a Nibiru here instead? And just like that negated. Maxi when paired up with another hand trap, that's when it skyrockets to absolute absurdity of just auto winning the duel. But by itself, it's I feel like it's just always going to get negated. Three ash, finger, finger. Cross out. That's six cards to stop your Max C. We're going to link off into a Link Karibo with our now Turbulence. Going to banish from the Graver to come forth and summon. And with the Turbulence, we're going to activate set up to four cards from our deck into the back row. And even if not Nibiru, you'll be like, oh, look, you can't Nibiru this. What if Maxi was an evenly match instead, right? Evenly match. You go second, evenly the fields. The the Ash is no good. The Call by the Grave is no good against Evenly. Should we just start playing Board Breakers again or what? Discard called by into Diablo Star. Diablo Star set up into the back row. Our Wanted Seeker. Further link this up into a Promethean Princess. Promethean Reborn Turbulence. Turbulence and Promethean into a Sunlight Wolf. Now ending the turn. What does setting four back row do? Or back row equals triple disruption. It's going to be a way to flip a monster face down, negate a monster, pop a monster. And we also have Promethean in the grave, so that's a fourth disruption. Four disruptions off of this. Let's see what we could do. I'm going to chain Wanted Seeker to the emergency summoning from the deck. We will summon the Mad Lad that then goes to the graveyard, prevents her to then reborn a Banish Hydrant. DK thinking you can make custom hands. Take Maxi out of your deck, put in evenly, and report back to me. Just do the test. You got time, right? Do 10 duels. And tell me if evenly was better than your Maxi. Subversion is going to get pushing. We're going to Link Rebo dodge the push. I don't think so. Rescue is going to rescue the Hydrant back onto the field so we get the extra effects of the Extinguish and the Contain. It does not look like we now have a way to flip down a Preventer. So we're now from four disruption down to three. We're going to return the Subversion back, drawing into a top-decked Bonfire into grabbing our Poplar. Poplar trigger, special summon itself onto the field. Come to me, Original Sinful. Further link this up into Linkiribo. Trigger the Poplar. We have not committed to that normal yet. We can normal summon Alcanics for some plays. Original Sinful send Poplar. Ash Blossom negates. So we actually had five disruptions this turn because of the Ash Blossom. Now we are down to two. We have Extinguish and Contain. Contain the Alcanics, which means it also can't be used for a Link Summon. It's just stuck on the field. Can't attack, negated, can't be used for the extra deck. We just have Extinguish left. Summon a Diablo Star on Summon Trigger, set up a Subversion. You can only activate Subversion once per turn. We can't use it again. Now, if we Extinguish the Diablo Star, okay, sure. We didn't want them to link off with it into, let's say, a Hita. Hita Steel Monster from the Graveyard. Would pop in the Hita would have been better, though, maybe. We're going to Link Karibo, reduce the opposing Link Karibo to zero attack. And that was all of our disruption. Wanted Seeker searching our deck for a Diablo Star. And let's get to it. Emergency off the top of the deck, which could summon a Hydrant, or we could uh, instead summon a Turbulence, Prevents, or whatever we want from the deck. Emergency is going to set up a trap from the graveyard. It is activatable. The turn it's set. We're going to use the Hydrant, searching for an Air Lifter. We still have that normal summon. Now we don't. As we activate to search, we're also triggering the Temple on a summon to summon Flame Burge from the back row onto the field. Now is Flame Burge a form of disruption? No. This is no good. We uh, we don't have anything. We don't have a Promethean. We got nothing. We're going to trigger our own Promethean Princess off of your summon. We're going to use Extinguish to wipe out the Flame Burge and make it not activatable. Even if you had two level one fires, which you don't in the grave, it would not be summonable. 
Promethean reborning our turbulence in the graveyard, triggering the wolf to return our ashen grave back to our hand, setting up the rescue ace HQ. It's a temporary boost only while the opponent controls a monster. Return up to four cards from our banish and or engrave back in the deck to draw one. Turbulence activate to set up to four cards from the deck. None of them will be activatable. Set, 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 set. Now, we're going to further link this up into a Raging Phoenix. Raging Phoenix into a Zelantis. Zelantis banishing the entire field. Return back onto the field, Zelantis. We already triggered our Promethean Princess. So that is something. We're going to summon our Diablo Star to battle. We go. Link Karibo going to reduce the uh, Hydrant. Was at 500 just to the field spell. 2,500 for game. That is a 2-1 victory. Rescue Ace knocking out Snake Eye Fire King. Very well done. Nightmare Pain. We're going to Ash Blossom negate that Nightmare Pain. We are not going to cross out Designate. We didn't care to. We didn't need to. We're okay, we're just going to set it past. Back to you. Let's go. Well, we're not going to see the power of Evenly because it is made on a not... Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Why didn't we cross out if we were just going to, like, end? At least we'd, like, kind of do something. We didn't know they have max C for sure. Begin. Gia, what, what happened here? Is this some kind of collusion? Look at Nakira and Clef, Clef, Clefari. Clefari, did they have to go somewhere? Are they friends? Are they brothers? Are they sisters? Figure it out, then DQ someone. Thank you. All right, let's hop in another match. Starting this off with a patchwork, which will grab a polymerization and an edge imp chain. Now off of this, we're gonna get polymerizing. Chain the maxi. We do have Call by the Grave to finger that maxi. Of course we're doing that. Finger that fool. Now, generally, it, it, Maxi with another hand trap is incredible because it will either eat up a card like the Called By or a Cross Out or even eat an Ash and then you could use your other card. But you also want to think about what if you wanted them to eat your Ash first to protect your Called By? Let them finger your Ash to protect your Maxi, which we didn't set up here. So now we are going to have to make some good use out of that Ash Blossom. Chimera on active on someone will activate to discard a card during the end phase. And we have Gazelle, which is going to be adding an illusion monster from the deck to the hand, as the edge of chain will also chain link block it from being negated. We have not used our normal summon yet. So as we search our deck for a Kodal, Kodal will be able to protect us from if the opponent activates a card effect that targets a card we control, we can negate. Ash, negate the Kodal mate. So was the Ash more effective than the Maxi? That's the mindset you want to have on which one you want to use first. Randomly discarding the Circular during the end phase. What the? We're in a small world, building a bridge from Nibiru and Effect Veiler to add another Circular to our hand. Damn. All right. Circular, send from the deck, Sigma, special summon. We will probably want to imperm the Allen Burts, not the Circular. Okay, we're going to negate that circular from searching for an equation or a super factorial. We can now get a season unless we super poly. If we super poly on resolution, it's gonna be awkward when they follow up with the on summon diameter, which is limited to one, by the way. They should not have this in their freaking hand. We did it. Lingaribo to negate that trap. That's not a trap. We're gonna super poly with your Lingaribo and our monster into a Dragostepelia. Okay, let's go. We can now can negate that diameter. Not only are we negating it, but we're turning it into a level one, so we can't rank four Xyz to search for the super factorial. There you go. Very well done. Negate. All right, and we can now splash mage it up. Yes, let's get splashing. Do you even splash? Gia set up my Pokemon Live character to say that at the start of every duel. At the start of the duel, it says, do you even splash bro? And at the end of the duel, only if you win, you could set up a voice line or a text. And GS set it up to say, that duel speaks for itself, didn't it? We're going to trigger the Link Decoder, <laughs> reborn from the graveyard. So I'm not getting any friend requests after games I win, uh, to be fair. We're going to now make a Terahertz. Within the battle phase, Terahertz is going to send from the deck to Baboost, double Baboost, 11,000 attack. What? Chimera, what are we doing here? 
We're gonna banish. Wait, doesn't this negate anything in the battle phase? Negate monster effects activated by your opponent during the battle phase. You would have had to done this at the end of the main phase too. Do what? It doesn't matter. Negated. Lethal damage. I think that's the new coolest way to lethal, right? Not the newest, but uh, if you think about ways to lethal through an access code talker, not that cool. Sigma's pretty cool. That's maybe cooler. 11,000 send and negate within the battle phase. Zelantis used to be cool. It's not so cool anymore. Let's hop into game number two. Patchwork it up. We have Ash and Valor. Let's see what we could do with these two hand traps from the turn one. We're gonna Palmerize, fuse it up into our Burfamet. With the Burfamet, we're going to be activating to send a card from the deck to the graveyard, right? Yep. Send a Beast, Fiend, or Illusion from the deck to the grave. This is a way to floodgate the opponent. You send a Dark Barrier to the graveyard, then your opponent could only summon Dark Monsters. The gate, as we then add a Patchwork through the effect of the Edge of Chain. We didn't even have to use our Ash Blossom. Off the top of the deck, we have that Gamma. Well, you know, we do have Ash Blossoms and a Gate Gamma, so, you know, it's fair to do this. Gamma, negate. Wait, we have Ash Blossom instead. We're not going to Gamma Maxi. That's interesting. Did not Gamma. When are you gonna be able to Gamma? That would be like a good opportunity right then and there. No, we have a Negate for the Impermanence, Cynet Mining, Discard Gamma, Ash Blossom, Negate the Cynet Mining. What the heck happened? Damn. We have not used up our normal summon yet. We're gonna Shokan into Splash Mage. We do have Impermanence to get Negating. Gamma locks him out of Transcode Talker. That is something. Transcode states that you cannot special summon monsters the turn you activate this effect. So what a lot of people were doing, uh, we saw someone do this, I think it was in the TCG or maybe in a Master Duel tournament, they Lava Golemed, and then they summoned a Transcode Talker, they sat there for a while, then surrendered. And we were all thinking, what the heck happened? Well, the Lava Golem turned off being able to special summon for the turn you activate this effect. Splash Mage gets Splash in, we're going to get Negated, negate. And to battle we go, we are still big enough to take out that Birth of Mets. We have our Fright Fur Patchwork, which we want to have something else to Palmerize with. We're gonna normal summon our Edge M Chain big enough to take out the Splash Mage. Both players with no forms of disruption in sight. We could always top deck a circular. Oh, Small World needs another monster. Can we survive at 7,900 life? Can Chimera perform lethal damage with a top-decked Burfamet? Burfamet on summon, adding two cards from the deck, Chimera Fusion and a Gazelle. We're gonna activate that Chimera Fusion, fusing with our hand and field to make our Chimera King of the Phantom Beast, discarding that small world during the end phase, triggering Gazelle to add from the deck, triggering the Burfamet to reborn the Master Tau. Now, Master Tau, if sent to the graveyard, can reborn an illusion from the grave. We got Kotal, we already used up our normal summons. We cannot summon the illusion monster we search for here. Sword Knight is here. We're gonna use the Chimera Fusion to add itself from the graveyard back to the hand. To battle we go, this is only activatable within the main phase. And more than one copy is activatable. We're gonna set it to use during the opponent's turn. We could summon a Chimera Beast. With the Chimera Beast, we could pop two cards on the field, plus draw one. Thus, we're going to game three. Cynet Mining. We have just Max C, and no way to stop that Max C. Are we afraid of a Gamma here? No, we are not. Chain that Max C. How much special summoning do we want to perform under a Max C? What is worth it? Is it worth it to get to that super effect? Or no, okay, we have Max C and Nibiru. We will finger or ash the maxi, thus we just have that Nibiru. Counting up that summon. Summon number one, Chimera Fusion, chain the maxi. Two, negate. I don't think so, mate. Finger that C. All right, all right. Do we get hit with a big fat Nibiru? And what the hell is this? Gazelle of the Mythical Beast. This monster moves so fast that it looks like an illusion. To mortal eyes, thus, but it's not an illusion monster though. Illusion didn't exist yet. What the heck? It's outdated. We are fusing with the hand, making that Burfa Met summon number two. I don't think we're summoning five times. 
Send from the deck a Diabolica? Diabolica General adding back the Burfman and Grave to our hand. Chimera Fusion using the second effect. <laughs> Banish from the graveyard special summon Gazelle, the King of the Mythical Beasts, and a Burfamet from your deck and or graveyard. What does this card even do? It looks so old. It's got the generic background to it. When this card is normal or flip summoned, you could add a Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, from your deck to your hand. And that helps you fusion summon into what? What's the related card? This one, right? This is the OG one? <laughs> Holy moly, ain't no way! Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a good way to use that. The battle we go, wiping out the monster. Not enough for lethal damage, of course. Wait, is Super Poly game? 36? 36 Dan? How are we dealing 36? That's 3,000. Not enough for game. Gazelle will trigger, will not special summon though. Grabbing a Kotal. 3K! 6 hundred left. We're actually going to get main phase two Nibiru. That is something. Further show this up into a Muckraker. We had the Garura drawing a card after being sent to the grave. Muckraker attempt to reborn the Burfamet and successfully doing so, triggering the effect, grabbing a Gazelle from the deck. We're really holding on to that Nibiru. Wait, wait, wait until the end of the main phase, mate. Tributing off that entire field. Thus, they're now not going to be able to summon the Chimera. Well, can they? You have a Nibiru token plus two monsters in the hand. Let's read the Chimera. Three monsters with different names. It works. We will be able to summon a Chimera, which will pop a card plus draw two. Non-target poppage. All right, all right. Gamma in our hand. Sigma special summon. We are ready and waiting. We're going to make a Lingaribo, which will not stop that Chimera fusion. It will only stop a trap. Triggering the Firewall Guardian to Reborn from the Graveyard, further linking this up into a Splash Mage. It's time. Chimera Fusion into our Guardian Chimera. Ash Blossom stops this. You negate the entire effect. As we are going to Chain Link block it, so that would not even be able to happen. Pop one, draw two. What? House of War? Wax? House of Wax? Huh? No hand traps. What? What? Wait, what? When the opponent declares an attack, special summon this card. What does it do on summon? We are, we killed ourselves. What'd the wax do? What'd the wax do? If this card battles, it cannot be destroyed. At the end of the opponent's battle phase, you could activate the effect until the start of your opponent's next battle phase. All attack position monsters your opponent currently controls cannot change their battle positions, nor be used for fusion, synchro, exceeds, or link. And they're negated. What the heck is this? Okay, uh, good job. 2-1 victory. Begin. Starting off with a Nadir Servant. We're going to Ash Blossom negate you from sending a card from the extra deck to the grave. We're going to call by the grave, finger that Ash. So let's see exactly what we send. We could send a Garura to draw. We could send a Herald of Arc Light to search our deck for a ritual card. What do? So this will, on the resolution, send Garura for the draw, grabbing a Maximus, randomly drawing into our Maxi. Maximus banishing the Garura chain Maxi to that Maximus. Now, Voiceless Voice doesn't really special summon that much. Maximus is here. Send two cards from both players' action act to the graveyard. The opponent gets to choose what they send. We have the Tri-Brigade Farragit to draw a card. Also, chain link block the Herald of Arc Light. Draw, return a card back, drawing into a random card here, but searching specifically for the Skull Guardian. We are going to Ritual Summon. Sending the Maximus to summon the Skull Guardian. This will be our last special summon. We have not committed to a normal summon yet. As we search for our Voiceless Voice Low. Low is here, Low cannot get Ash Blossom. As we set up into the back row, a barrier. Barrier searching for the Radiance. And just like that, also setting up a blessing. What are our disruptions? What we could do is we could pop one card in the field. We can negate anything. We could imperm negates the blessing. Uh, this is now we're going to turn to a disruption because we don't have a ritual monster in the hand. This could search one, but then it trades that disruption for another form of disruption. Let's go. And our field of monsters cannot be targeted by card effects. Setting up a Diablo Star, discarding from the hand, grabbing an original sinful. Now we're going to max C before you open up your field. Well, if you're going to max C before I attempt a special summon, I'm just going to end my turn. Off the top of the deck, we have pre-preparation of rights. 
Ash Blossom negate, but we could use the Skull Guardian to negate the negate, but we will not be doing that, mate. We know that there, now there's just a maxi left for us to negate. Nothing else worth negating. Grabbing a Sephira from the deck. Sephira discard, search our deck, and send a ritual spell from the deck to grab Sarvis. Now we're gonna flip up the Radiance. Chain the maxi in response to the effect. We're gonna use the Skull Guardian to negate. I don't think so, mate. Now what we're doing is we're gonna return a ritual spell in the graveyard, back in the deck, summon from the deck another low. Low will trigger the blessing to summon the Sarvis from the hand, triggering low to reborn from the grave back onto the field. We're now locking up our backer with five cards as we have double barrier. With the double low, we could use them for the extra deck if we wanted to. I don't think we're locked on the extra deck. That's only the Dogmatic Punishment, which is for two turns. We are going to trigger the Diablo Star within the damage step, which we could negate in the damage step with the Skull Guardian. Now, Sarvis can negate Diablo Star, and it also cannot. The trigger effect of reborning from the grave, Sarvis cannot negate. The Diablo Star effect of summoning from the hand, Sarvis can negate and banish. Let's go. Blessing returned back Sephira in Grave for a follow-up play. We have tons of disruption here. Imperm negate a monster. Skull Guardian negate anything. Sarvis negate a special summon. Radiance pop up to two cards in the field. Blessing resummon the Sarvis to negate again. That's five disruptions. Grabbing Diablo Star, which Sarvis will negate. Straight up. We're not doing it yet. Original Sinful. Return back Diablo Star, grabbing a Ponyx. Okay. We're going to activate Sanctuary, setting up the Fire King Island. We're gonna use the Radiance to get poppin'. Now we pop both and the Sanctuary is going to protect it from being destroyed. Now, if the Sanctuary said destroy itself instead, it would have successfully popped both cards, but it does not have the effect to do that. It is to destroy another card instead. All right, so we're now down to four disruption. We're gonna use the Wanted Seeker return back to draw a card. Activate to pop. We're going to activate to negate the pop. I don't think so. We do not want the Garunix to be triggered here. Now down to triple disruption. Barking Island activating to wipe out the field of monsters we don't have. We have the Snake Eye Oak being negated by impermanence. Negate. All we have left is double Saravis negate. So to battle we go, we're going to kill ourselves to trigger the Garunix within the damage step. We can't do anything about this. Damage step, send Kirin. Damage step, reborn Kirin. Taking out the Sarvis. Now the two disruption we have is now nothing. Zero disruption. Ponix trigger, grabbing the Skyburn. Main phase two, summon the Diablo Star, which the Sarvis was supposed to negate, but we couldn't. Setting up an original Sinful. Link off into Link Karibo. Now this already activated. And you can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. So we can't use the first effect of summoning from the deck. We're gonna further link this up into Mascarina. Mascarina and Link Karibo into Promethea. And we got zero disruption. They got full plays, whatever they want. They just can't target our monsters with card effects. Light monsters are untargetable. Poplar trigger, summon itself onto the field. So Mobile X did a really good job of not getting Diablo Star negated by the Sarvis, dealing with everything within the damage step. Now the Skull Guardian can negate within the damage step. We're going to, with the Zelantis, now be banishing the entire field. While the field can't be targeted, we could non-target banish it. Come back and we could summon it face down. So if you don't have a face up low and ritual monster, the effect of being untargetable is no longer in play. Now the Prayers of the Voiceless does trigger. A face-up light ritual left the field by a card effect, so it's gonna summon from the deck a Sarvis or a Skull Guardian. The Sarvis will not be activatable to negate anything. The Sarvis can negate an inherent special summon. We summon Skull Guardian anyway. We're gonna send Ash Blossom from our back row with the effect of Snake Eye Ash to summon a Flame Burge. We're gonna be Re-equipping the Mascarine into the back row for the show conning into Lil Knight. Lil Knight on summon, get banishing. Banishing the Sarvis, chain link block with the flame burge, even if you had a negate, you would not be able to negate it now. Reborn the Ponyx, reborn the Ash. Goodbye to Skull Guardian. This duel is up in the air. I mean, th this is quite insane. 
We're gonna have to be able to flip up both monsters to get that targeting protection. Otherwise, we do have the Skyburn to pop one card in the field. We have Lil Knight to banish a monster. We have the Garunix, which will be able to pop a card in the field. We have Promethean, which will pop a special summon. And uh, the Mascarina will be able to link into at least something. If you summon a monster that will trigger the field spell to summon, it will probably be a uh, an Apollo USA, which I think will be at least three. This is about seven disruptions we have to deal with as voiceless. I don't think we could break this. I'll be surprised. Ooh, Ghost Ogre could stop the Mascarina from being summoned by popping the field spell. That is something. Definitely something. Taking out the Skull Guardian with the Skyburn. Triggering Garunix to pop a Kirin from the deck. With the Kirin popped, reborn, pop a card in the field, take out the Blessing. That is the ideal. Now Barrier is going to be searching for a third copy of Low. Sephira is going to send from the deck a Ritual Spell, searching for a Ritual Monster or adding one from the Grave back to her hand. Sephira perform a Ritual Summon. We're going to Little Knight, banish ourselves, plus a low. That's okay, we have the other low. You had to banish the royal copy of her. Come forth, Skull Guardian. Skull Guardian is gonna be the higher chain link. Chain link blocking low from summoning from the graveyard. And this is where we could Ghost Ogre, pop the field spell, or use Skull Guardian to negate it from summoning the Mascarina. We could have chain link blocked the Divine Temple with our Promethean Princess if the fields were targetable. We can't target with Promethean Princess because the barrier is protecting them, thus completely turning off the Promethean Princess, thus not chain link block in the temple, and it gets assured by Ogre, and we still have the Skull Guardian negate. So I was wrong. We were able to successfully break this field. Low come back, setting up a third copy of Barrier. Anima to suck up the Snake Eye Ash. Come to me. Link Karibo gonna dodge that suck. I don't think so. And isn't this targetable with Promethean Princess? It was, yeah. This is only protecting light monsters. Your light monsters cannot be targeted with card effects. So do we miss out on our opportunity to get poppin'? The battle we go. Link Karibo reducing the Sephira to zero. Skull Guardian big enough to take out the Garunix. So what do we have here in terms of disruption? We have one disruption. We have negate anything. Is that enough? In addition to being able to negate anything, our entire field of light monsters cannot be targeted by card effects. Uh, let's see what happens. Send the oak, summon a poplar. <laughs> now we can target the field. We just got goddess. Underworld goddess of the closed world linking off with the skull guardian. Ain't no way. Triggering the poplar to re-equip a card from our back row. Holy moly. And the ritual spell doesn't trigger. It's only if the monster leaves the field by card effects, not if it just leaves the field from the opponent. Poplar getting itself in the graveyard to trigger the Garunix within the damage step. Pop from the deck in our Vata. Arvata, Trigger, Reborn, Kirin. Kirin could destroy itself by battle here to then Reborn the Arvata if we wanted to. That would have been pretty cool. Wipe out the low, full field wipe, and wow, Goddess really putting in work. Kirin dying during the end phase to resummon the Arvata anyway, taking out a third copy of the barrier. Do we have anything activatable in the grave? That's a good question. If we have anything, we don't, there's nothing. There's nothing we could do off of this. We are in purely top deck mode and they can negate any monster effect. They could destroy a special summon with Promethean. They could Underworld Goddess negate an effect to Reborn from the Grave. They could Garunix pop a Kirin from the deck to pop any card in the field. I do think we have a third copy of Kirin still in the deck. Yes, we do. So we have four Disruption plus Versa top deck. That's no good. Well, the bear is gonna search for Sephira, which uh, still, this is not going to be a one card play. This is not enough. It, with Sephira, we search for Ritual Monster. We have nothing to use for the Ritual Summon. Let's hop into game two. That was a really good back and forth. Diviner, Imperm, Negate Diviner. <laughs> this is crazy. This is a one of, and it hard punishes the impermanence like nothing. Oh my Jesus. Dodge the impermanence, trigger Diviner, summon a low from the deck. We might get Nibiru'd.
our disruptions are. We have a way to summon Sarvis through Blessing. We also have the low will be summonable to grab the trap. That's another pop. We have Imperm negate. We have finger negate from the grave. We have skull guardian negate anything. About five disruptions. Yep, 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 yep. Let's go. Five, five, five. Grabbing a Diablo star with the wanted seeker. Discard Nibiru, summon the Diablo star. That will trigger the blessing. Blessing, tribute low, summon Sarvis. Reborn the low. Now, there's a secret effect on the blessing. And it happened in one of my duels, and it's great. So the secret effect is the monster you summon cannot be destroyed by battle. It That's for the entire duel. The, the blessing could leave the field. It could be turn 10. They finally swing in to find out can't be destroyed. Got that radiance, as I said. Diablo Star sends, summon an Ash. Ash is here. Add nothing as the Imperm negates. And we're doing this against a Snake Eye Fire King deck. This is wild that our Imperm on Diviner didn't work because the one of Trias was dodging it. But the Imperm on our Snake Eye Ash, while we play three Kirin, it went through. We have Arvata with the ability to negate a monster effect. Now, Arvata negates the effect, not the activation. Also doesn't destroy the monster it's negating. The Skull Guardian can negate the activation, thus it can be used in the damage step, and it does destroy the card it negates. Let's go, let's go. Barrier search our deck for a low. Surely we could perform lethal damage, yes? Chaos Angel is here. Does it have protection from the Arvata negate? Let's click on it. It does. It's unaffected from activated monster effects, banishing the Arvata off the field, 10,000 damage. Let's wipe this up, taking this into game number three. Voiceless voice playing Dogmatica. Game two victory. Dogmatica, voiceless. There is, I feel that voiceless is underrated. I think it's better than people think it is. Maybe it's going to have a good showing in the Duelist Cup. A prob the biggest problem the deck has is how expensive it is. I think that's one of the biggest limiting factors on why people do not want to play the deck. Battle of the Hand Traps. Top Law, we're not going to negate with Ash. Max C on the resolution. Gee, what was that? Original Sinful, send Pop to summon from the deck. No Ash again. No Ash on the search for the Skyburn. Set three end. Holy moly. What is this? We are going to, what we could do is Kieran pop Ponix, Skyburn pop Kieran, to then Reborn Ponix, pop a card in the field, plus pop a card with the Skyburn, plus Imperm, Imperm, and Valor. This non-threatening looking field is actually five disruptions, including the hand. Five. A dear servant, sending Entis to pop a card in the field. Let's get popping. Take out the impermanence. So we just lost a disruption. Maximus banish the Entis. Entis is not a hard once per turn. We could do it again. Do we have more Entises? The problem with Entis is it's an ultra rare. Uh, and I know that well. I crafted three. I uh, maybe regret that. Baylor negates. Now down to triple disruption left. All right, all right. We don't have any real plays off this. We have Maxi chaining to the Kirin, setting up with that Skyburn play I was talking about. Maybe we're going to draw into something. Nope, did not draw into something. Ending our turn. <laughs> Let's go. We're going to Ponic since it was destroyed. Add back to the hand during the next standby phase. We could dodge the impermanence with the Skyburn. Well, uh, not onto the Oak. Skyburn has to pop a monster. We're going to use Ghost Ogre to take out the Oak. It doesn't negate, but getting it off the field will ensure it does not use the second effect to summon from the deck a Flame Burge. We have the Ponix being triggered since a Fire Monster was destroyed to Special Summon, setting up a Sanctuary, and uh, we're also grabbing a Divine Temple with the Ponix, uh, the Poplar, that is. Ash negate the Ponix from searching and setting up the Sanctuary. Okay. Now, the Skyburn can only pop the opponent's cards, not your own. So there's no cool plays of pop your own Flame Burge. We're going to Link Rebo. We could very easily reborn the Oak with a Promethean Princess. That's going to be the goal here. So what should we do to stop that? Should we have Ogre popped the Hita? Well, we can't. The Ogre's a hard once per turn. 
Goodbye to the impermanence as we destroy the Kirin to reborn the Ponix to destroy our own card with Kirin. Instead of taking out the opponent's card, destroy any card in the field. And just like that, Flamebirds, reborn the Oak, reborn the Poplar. Let's go. Promethean Princess is going to be reborning from the grave. Can't Ogre. Ogre is dead. Push back the Maximus. 11,000 damage. Snake Eye Fire King. Finish him. All right. Can Kirin survive the ban list until Fiendsmith comes out? Because once Fiendsmith comes out, you're not going to want to play Snake Eye Fire King anyway. So that's the big question. We know a card is going to be coming out that's already going to make Kieran not as good, but Kieran is potentially a problem right now, which I don't really think it is because the deck's not popular enough, but the deck is very good and arguably better than Ubel, if not at the same level of Ubel. Pot of P, digging deep. Got that evenly matched to try to banish the entire field. Now, Rescue Ace is heavily susceptible to an evenly match. They don't set up a way to negate it. They're not going to have anything. All you say, oh my gosh. I mean, is it worth it to count the disruptions? <laughs> we had three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight disruptions, and then evenly. From eight disruptions, we're going to go down to still four. Four disruptions is still really good. What? We got rid of Apollo? Really? So instead of Apollo, we just have Ash. That's it? Keeping up Hydrants for Promethean. Well, Promethean is activatable. Let's go. <laughs> Grass looking green. Milling a ton of cards off the top of the deck. You're going to see it as soon as it fully resolves. I just saw a Necro face. Oh my gosh. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 cards milled. Everything milled. You can see it right there. This is a Ubel, Horus, Snake Eye, Tear Lament, Necro face deck. Every engine in the game is in this deck. We even have a left arm offering to search for the grass looking green. Sullic triggered. Poplar trigger. What else do we have trigger in there? That's it. The Selic will be searching for a Sharon, which could discard the snow to summon itself onto the field. Oak's going to be sending the field spot to summon an Ash from the deck. All under Max C. Can we deck out Max C? Fairy Tail Snow could summon like five times from the graveyard. That's at least five draws there. Lameberge. Are we setting up lethal or decking out? <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's do it. Are you ready? Let's go. Oh my. Anaconda. We're, we're not using that. We're definitely not using that. We're, we're still cooking. Anaconda's later. That's going to be our last playing. Oak. Reborn the Poplar. Let's go. Let's go. Link Rebo. 22 more special summons. 21. Anima. I mean, we're, we have to be going for that. That's exactly what we're going for. We're going for Curious. That's right. Anaconda, really good for summoning a Curious. Curious sent from the deck, a field spell search. We're going to be searching our deck for a Crystal Beast and a field spell as we also mill three. Holy moly. Fairytale Snow is going to be whipped out at the end. Card destruction against a Max C is an auto win. Is this how we're getting ourselves into the top 16? Were we decking people out against Max C? Kick Kalos is here. Kick Cal, search or send a tier limit. We have used up our normal summon. Linking this up into a cross sheep. We can now make a phantom of you, Bell, if we want to. Kick Cal, summon Rhino. Kick Cal, trigger. Rhino, send from the deck. Let's go, let's go. 15 cards left. We're definitely doing this. We're doing it. It's happening. Mill five, Sharon, trigger to fuse. Cash Tira, tier limit, mill an additional two cards off the top of our deck. We have Necro Face in the grave. Necro Face gonna banish five cards off of both players' decks. Rue counts to negate a potential Nibiru. Cross Sheep trigger, reborn Fairytale Snow. That's our other copy of Fairytale Snow. Fairytale Snow and Ultra Rare, multiple copies, lots of URCP. 
Now we're going to trigger our Promethean Princess. Rook Kalos will negate. Link Karibo is going to be jumping into the field to get rid of our Hydrant. 12 cards left. We have not even started using our Fairytale Snows yet. 47 cards in the graveyard. Reborning our horse cards, exceeding into Zombie Vampire. Mill four cards off of the opponent's deck. Mill four. Airlifter is going to be chaining to summon a monster from the hand. That's going to be useless. What's that doing? Impulse. Mill four off the top. Reborning a Diablo Star off the opponent's graveyard milled. The deck's pulsating. That's new. That's a new feature. I'm not holding anything. <laughs> Three cards left. We haven't even Fairytale snowed yet. I think he could deck out a 60 card deck. Little Knight on Summon, <laughs> banishing the impulse off the field, reboarding the happy. One card left, Fairytale Snow with 48 cards in the graveyard. Come forth and summon Fairytale Snow again. And just like that, deck out victory. Holy moly, do not maxi against TTK. He's playing every deck in the game in one. Set up the in-game. We're gonna start this off with an airlifter, lift off, grabbing an emergency from the deck. We're gonna discard contain, which the emergency could reset back onto the field. Holy Shokan into the Apollo USA. Maybe this time we're gonna leave up the Apollo USA. I think so. Do we have Promethean in the graveyard? So the disruptions we have here are three monster negates, a monster pop, a fifth monster negate form of disruption, and we have a way to flip a monster face down. So we have six disruptions plus a max C. Now the evenly match will banish everything but one card. Let's go. It's about it, not this again. Gargolo, two games in a row, a 60 card deck double evenly matching you. Evenly match. Bunish, everything on the field except one card. We're gonna just be scrambling. Summon from the deck in impulse, banishing everything but the Apollo say. There we go, that is correct. Leaving this face up. Airlifter is going to be triggered to grab an airlift field spell for the next turn. We have the Nightmare Throne, which is gonna be negated by the Apollo say. Diablo Star, negate. Now, the biggest way to counter Apollo USA is going to the battle phase, which we already did. So she can continually reduce her attack, continually negating with no fear. Anima is going to at least eat 800 off of the Apollo. It is a hard once per turn, fortunate for the Apollo, but we could chain another monster effect to the Apollo negating something else because she can't negate twice within the same chain. Get rid of that turbulence. Goodbye to prevent her return back the original sinful back in the deck, which would have been activatable during the next turn. We're going to be activating Max C on the resolution of that before this inevitable link summon into a little knight. Little knight on someone, banish a card on the field or in the graveyard. We're not going to use our Apollo in response because we could chain banish the Apollo to dodge the negates. Let's set up the field spell. Now the field spell can interact with banished cards, but not if they're banished face down. The Contain, Extinguish, Emergency, well, the Emergency has multiple copies. The Extinguish and Contain, they're gone for the rest of the duel. And those are our main forms of disruption if you're playing Rescue Ace. So we're in big trouble. Return back, draw one, top decking a Bonfire, come to me Poplar. We do have Little Knight to chain banish something, but the Apollo is actually pinning down Little Knight from being a disruption. On your own turn, the Lil Knight was essentially pinning down the Apollo. Now it's the opposite. Apollo's now on top of Lil Knight. We're going to send the Poplar to some from the deck. Hydrant. Hydrant activate to search our deck for our air lifter. The field spell allows an additional summon, so we didn't use our regular normal summon yet. Grabbing an emergency. With the emergency, we're going to summon from the deck Turbulence. With that summon, we're going to get rid of our air lifter. As we then use the turbulence to set up from the deck everything but our traps since they are banished face down, gone from the game for good. Set, set, set. Speed that up. Hydrant allowing a newly set card activatable to turn it was set through the effect of a Rescue Ace card. We got Preventer banishing a Rescue Ace card to come forth and summon. Let's build up this field. 
Shokan into a Nightmare Phoenix on summon, discard a card, take out the Nightmare Throne, which is not really doing anything. But that is to trigger the Preventer to reborn the Banish Airlifter. It's a really good way to Link climb up, Link off with your Preventer. We also were co-linked. So we did get to draw a card there. The Promethean reborning Turbulence in the Graveyard, further linking off the Promethean into a Raging Phoenix. Now we're going to turn the Apollo USA into a World Sea Dragon Zelantis. Zelantis, we're just going to go straight to the battle phase, not activate anything. Lil Knight can't do anything. And just like that, Gargolo, despite losing his two Rescue Ace traps, was able to take a game to victory because TTK was not able to set up anything so good uh, for follow up. We just had Little Knight. We had no other forms of disruption. Set him for the Nightmare Throne, which is an Ash check. No Ash activation. We have D Lotus. Ash check again. Ash is going to negate. No summon of a Spirit of Ubel from the deck. And we held on to Max C. So we are waiting to see if they could finger our Ash with a Call of the Grave and then follow up with Max C. We know our Max C is safe unless they have an Ash of their own. Banishing the Rainbow Bridge through the effect of the Foolish Burial Good, sending it from the deck to the grave, a limited to one card. Replace our Field Spell with the Tier Limit Field Spell, grabbing a Sharon. Sharon is going to discard a Hovness to come forth and summon, discarding by card effect to trigger the Hovness to fuse with the newly added Crystal Beast from our deck to our hand to make our Kit Kalos. We're, we're afraid to max C. That's what's going on here. <laughs> I max C'd game one, and that's how I lost. So I'm not doing it again. <laughs> no way. We're actually afraid to max C. <laughs> okay. Let's mill three plus mill five. <laughs> Why are you afraid? Just do it. Like, okay, fine. Now we can max C. That actually ended the turn. Very well done. Did we end on any form of disruption? We do. We have a disruption, not through Fairy Tale Snow. We have no way to get her into the graveyard, but we have Mudora the Explorer with the Tyrell Midfield spell, which will trigger the effect to pop one card in the field, and that's all we got. Well, we could actually Tyrell Midfield spell pop our Sharon, which could then go into a Kaleido Heart or a Rukalos, which is still one disruption. All right, let's see. Bonfire add a Poplar, Poplar trigger. Come forth and summon onto the field. Poplar, grab from the deck, and original Sinful. This is going to be a big turn, so let's do this. Let's do this. Are you ready? Anima to suck up the Tier Limit Cash Tira. Get sucking. Come to me. We're going to follow up with the original Sinful. Send the Poplar to summon from the deck. A Hydrant. We only have one form of disruption. We're going to use it right here, right now. Take out that Hydrant before it activates. We did not trigger the Tier Limit Field spell. You have to return a tier you control or in your graveyard back on the deck. Did we not have a tier to return? We uh, we could have returned. K uh, the, 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 what, what? What? We didn't do it. Kick Cow could have been returned. We're scooping. Damn. Damn. What happened? He forgot? Okay, maybe he forgot. Yeah. Let's go. We don't have a good turn one hand, though. This is actually trash. Grab a birth, set in perms and pass. <laughs> oh my Jesus, that is so bad. We're going to dark beckoning, in perm, negate. Just like that, we do have the follow up with the nightmare pain and the nightmare throne. So this is not a big deal. Let's keep on cooking, but we do have an in perm. Now, we passed on unicorn looking at the extract to banish your card face down. Why would we pass? Why would we wait? We're going to chain Maxi. Of course, they have an Ash Blossom to negate our Maxi. We will not be drawing per special summon. Now, the birth may come into play to do something worthwhile as it could banish three cards from the opponent's graveyard after a spell activates. We're getting rid of Yama. Just like that, Yama be gone. There weren't three cards in the grave to banish with the birth as the Nightmare Throne resolved, so that was no good. There's still not three cards in that graveyard to banish with the birth. As we summon a Terra Incarnate, we're going to again summon another Phantom of Ubel. This reflects battle damage. This is 6,300 damage, not enough for lethal damage yet. Pop on the Terra Incarnate, Terra Incarnate, trigger to, wait, how is this triggering? You actually play the ultimate nightmare? Which three attacks is game? 
That is enough for game. We don't need anything else. Wait. You you blocked it. If you were to summon one of your Phantom View Bells in the extra monster zone, you could have summoned your ultimate nightmare. This could only activate if you have an ultimate nightmare to summon. What the heck was that? Return back, return. There you go. Four attacks, <laughs> lethal damage, and 2,000, 2,100 defense. 21, 21, 21, 21 for game. Bro, what? What is with your deck? You're playing 41 cards. I'm sure that your cash tiers are not making your deck less consistent. This is a travesty. What you could do, but you're probably not going to do it because you probably don't play it. You could make an anaconda. You could summon anaconda. Yeah, like, well, uh, damn. Gamma is going to negate and destroy the unicorn, but we could chain the Ash Blossom to negate the Gamma instead. It stays in the hand. It is activatable again. So on the resolution, what we could do is we could use Unicorn to look at the extra deck. Yup. And if you were going to negate and destroy, we would birth it back onto the field. What is this? Little Knight, Little Knight. Sure, not Anaconda. Birth Reborn, the Unicorn, set Imperm. We just have two disruptions, that's it. And no Yama for them, no Yama. Spirit Gates, grabbing a Dark Beckoning Beast from the deck. We're gonna use Nightmare Pain. And then we're going to summon a Phantom of your Bell, returning two monsters back in the deck. We now have a monster negate. We can negate that little knight. As the Dark Beckoning searches for a second copy of the Spirit Gates, we're going to use Unicorn to look at that extra deck, getting rid of the little knight, banishing it face down, additionally summoning into a D Lotus to summon from the deck a Spirit of your Bell. Are we going to chain impermanence? No, we are not, because they're searching for a second copy of the Nightmare Pain. We're going to imperm the Phantom of your Bell before potentially activating a monster effect. What are we doing? That is one of our d two disruptions. All right, we're going to Little Knight chain to the Nightmare Pain. That is what we were expecting. Had we not impermed early, the Phantom of Ebel would have been able to negate the Little Knight from banishing our spirit from being popped by the Nightmare Pain. Now, what are we popping? We're going to take out our Dark Beckoning Beast instead. For the Grave Scormer being searched for with the Nightmare Pain, we're going to special summon it. Link off of the Phantom of Ebel, I should say Synchro, into a Chaos Angel. On summon, banishing the cash tier of birth off the field. Discard the spirit gates to reborn the D Lotus. Since we control level 10, return a continuous spell in the graveyard back to our hand. The battle we go, wiping out the unicorn. Now, what are their forms of disruption? They have nothing. No disruption, and we top decked a barrier of the voiceless voice. Let's go. Barrier is here. Barrier, search our deck for a low. With the low on summon, we're gonna activate. There is a disruption. The D Lotus is a disruption. If your opponent activates a monster effect during their turn, change the effect to instead destroy a Yubel you control. Oh my Jesus. There's no Yubel to destroy, but your effect is still to destroy a Yubel. Wow. Bunnies. <laughs> okay. Low. It, yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, it, it still changes the effect to an invalid effect that just has no U Bell to destroy. You don't retain your original effect back just because there's no U Bell to destroy. It, it's just the activation requirement to have a U Bell to change your effect. It doesn't matter if there's a U Bell afterward. That's a 2 0. Damn. Thank you, YouTube, for watching the top 16. The top eight and grand finale will be in the next video. Let's go.